Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today it's a sewing adventure because my muse hit me with an idea and I thought, hey, sure, how hard could that be? <laughs> Famous last words. What happened is, as I saw this stencil and I thought, man, those would make some fun dolls. So why don't I just turn them into dolls? Now, I will give you a little bit of a spoiler here. I did figure it out, but FYI, home ec class 30 some years ago where you make a pillow and an apron didn't give me all the information that I needed to make these things. I've cut a bunch of cotton fabric into about square shapes that are about the size of the figures on the stencil. And once I've got that under there, then I'm gonna bring in some color using Marabou's Fashion Spray. When I spray with this, I make sure I'm holding it back a little bit and I'm gonna spray lightly. Less is more with this if you wanna have the definition and the lines with it. And I definitely wanna hold that detail that's on the center of it with that scribble journaling in there. So by doing a light amount of it, I get all of that definition. The stenciling part here, uh, this stuff, I know. I'm very comfortable with the supplies. I've done this lots of times. But beyond this, now we're into the part where I'm kind of winging it, trying to figure out exactly how to get this idea in my head to work. Now I do know that I'm gonna sew a front and a back to this. So the piece of fabric that's the same size, I'm very proud of myself for pinning them together now so that I'm sure they stay together to make it easier for me later. And yeah, I'm gonna have to unpin that, but we'll get to that in a moment. There's lots of color still on that stencil and I hate to waste anything that fun. So I'm taking a scrap piece of fabric here and I'm blotting it up. And at the same time, I'm gonna create an interesting piece of fabric using the same stencil and not wasting a single thing. I'm gonna repeat this process over and over again until I have a nice big stack of these made. Now, why am I doing so many of them? Well, it's because I don't really know what I'm doing beyond the stenciling. When I go to sew these things together, it's just not something I've got a lot of practice with and I don't know what is gonna work and what's not gonna work. So I'm gonna make a whole bunch of these so that if some of them don't work, it's not gonna be a big deal. The stencil that I'm using to do this that has these five characters on here, this is called Dancing with Matisse and is a stencil that I created for over at Stencil Girl Products. Sometimes I get a little excited when I'm spraying on the color and I'm generous with it. So as I'm putting this blue on here, I'm putting more than what I actually need. So what's gonna happen is my edge lines are all gonna be great and still crisp, but the fine detail of the scribble journaling in the middle of the figure, that's not gonna be quite as crisp. It's gonna have a little bit of a hazy blurry look to it. So did that ruin it? No, absolutely not. It's just gonna give it a little more of a watercolor vibe to it than a straight stenciling vibe. So make as many of these as you want and then give them a few minutes to dry before you go on to the next step. Now that I've got a great big stack of these, I need to get them ready to put them through the sewing machine. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned how I was so proud of myself for pinning them all together. Yeah, there was one little thing that I forgot because when I go to sew these, I need to have the outsides facing in. So I should have flipped them around and done them backwards. So make sure that you flip it around so that the what's gonna be on the outside is on the inside so right sides in whatever the proper term is for that and then pin it back together and head on over to a sewing machine I've made a pillow before you know where you take those two pieces of fabric sew them along three of the sides and leave an opening on the other so that you can turn it right side out I figured that's everything that I need to know it's the same concept here right except I'm using a different shape I'm using a free motion foot here on the sewing machine so I can just go in whatever shape that I want so it's really easy to go around the curves and that kind of thing and I'm just sewing right along the edges of the color. Now, there's something that I didn't understand when I was sewing this one and that is when you turn something inside out the smaller the hole is to pull it out through the harder it is to do. So all of those little arms, well, they ended up being a real challenge. You're gonna see what happens with those a little bit later in the video. As I made more of these, what I realized is, is I need a bigger hole for some things. So when it came time for the arms, I tended to really widen up the armpit. Having those larger armpits made it a whole lot easier to pull those arms through. Making these dolls is a great big adventure of trial and error, partially because 
I don't really understand exactly what I'm doing beyond those basics that I got from that home ec class. So that means I'm going to make some mistakes along the way. There are some things that I'm going to figure out better, faster, easier ways to do it after I do more of them. That's completely reasonable and logical, right? Well, one of the things that I did learn the hard way is that you do need to leave an opening somewhere to turn this right side out. Because in my excitement the first time doing this, I actually sewed the entire thing up. So make sure that you leave a place where you're not stitching all the way through so you can pull it inside out, or right side out. The spot that I found worked best for me was right here between the legs. That opening ended up being large enough for me to relatively easily turn it right side out. So that's the part that I will leave not sewn. Here's one that I've sewn up and I'm going to trim off the excess fabric. Now there's something coming into my mind that I feel like I should be thinking about, but I'm not really. And that's seam allowances. Something like that maybe. I'm just trimming right up next to the stitching, trying to be very careful not to cut the stitching, but getting pretty close to it. Because guess what? Some of the times I did actually cut the stitching on these. So it's a good thing that I have plenty and extras and spares because when you cut the stitching off of it, yeah, it doesn't really hold together that well. I've trimmed as much of the excess fabric off of there to make it as easy as possible to turn it right side out. So now what I've got to do is grab that head and pull it all the way out. To help me do that, I've got some needle nose pliers here so I can really get a good handle on that head and just pull. And I thought it would just magically come right out. But no, that's not how this worked. It took a little bit of work in there just to get the main part of the body out, let alone the arms and the legs. Needless to say, I have a newfound respect for doll makers, soft sculpture makers, when they do very small detailed things. The arms were quite an adventure. Because it was such a small opening, I couldn't get the pliers in there to grab the fabric and pull it out. So I used a straight pin. Yep, I am just going a little millimeter by millimeter there, pulling out a little bit of fabric each time until I can get most of that arm out. Then I found something that had a dull edge to it but was skinny, and I pushed it up through the arm so I could get that last little bit of it there to come out, and it now has one complete arm. I repeated this until it had two arms, two legs, and a head. And I gotta tell you, by this point, I felt a real sense of accomplishment. Next came the stuffing. You just take some of the batting and then cram it all in there so it fills out the hands and the head and the legs and everything. One thing that I learned is that if you use smaller pieces, if you tear off smaller bits of the batting and put it in in small amounts at a time, it's a lot easier to get to go up into those little places like the arm. I know, right? Who would have thought? Smaller things fit more easily in smaller spaces. And those arms, boy, can they get really tiny. Something that surprised me as I was doing this was how much stuffing one of these little dolls could take because once you really packed it in there and got it in, these suckers could really hold a whole lot. I continued stuffing it until it was nice and firm and I had everything, the arms, the legs, the torso, all of it filled in. Then it was time to stitch up that opening. Now this is going to look like pioneer surgery. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be perfect because, well, I'm clearly not a seamstress. All I'm looking for here is something that will keep the stuffing from falling out of it. Now I tell you the proper name of the stitch that I'm doing here, but I have no idea what it is. The only proper stitching name that I currently know is a straight stitch, and that's because it goes in a straight line. This isn't really doing a straight line, so I'm not sure what this one's called. But basically, just keep stitching until the thing is closed up. About halfway through stitching up the gap, I decided I could add some more stuffing to this because that area wasn't quite as full as the rest of the doll. So I'm just going to stuff a little bit more in there and then continue stitching it up. Now, of course, if I had a smaller opening right there, I wouldn't have to do as much of this stuff. I wouldn't have to do as much stitching now, and it would probably be a little bit easier. Except I made the trade-off of having a larger opening there so it was easier for me to turn the doll right side out and it was easier to get all the stuffing in there. So once it was all sewn up, what did it look like? So here it is all finished. This is what it looks like completely sewn up. 
And well, as you can see, I've done a bunch of these things and I've learned a few things along the way, such as the armpits. Remember how I said that that makes it a really small area? So you'll notice on a lot of these, they have some really big armpits because I found it was just a lot easier with a bigger space to pull that arm through. The other thing is, is sometimes if I made the arms a little too narrow, if I sewed a little too close or went over the edge, then it was too small for me to actually get the arm out. So I ended up with each one of these having their own personality, being their own kind of character. Like this one, I call this one the Greek goddess. And that's because she's missing both of her arms, just like a lot of those ancient Greek statues. Now, as I was doing this, depending on how much spray I used, I would get a different look on these. So on this little purple guy, I used very, very little of the purple and I have very crisp lines in here. But on this guy, I used a whole bunch of it. So very little of the little lines, well, that sounds kind of very, a small amount of the little lines are actually showing here. So it has more of a full coverage look with it. So earlier in the video, remember how I said if you use a small amount of stuffing, it's easier to get into places like the fingers and the toes. Well, on this guy, I was not very patient at all. So there is almost no stuffing in the fingers and the hands for this one. Fingers, it's just a hand in this one because I just didn't use small amounts of it. So I used larger clumps of it. And then I basically got them all stuck up here in the arm. So that's why it didn't make it all the way down there. Whereas this one, I used a little more patience and I stuffed a little more carefully. So it's fuller throughout the arms. Just had to do with using a small amount of stuffing, which means it has some patience. So some of these are really stuffed well, and some of them aren't based completely on my patience level at the moment. Since I used fashion spray to do this, that means this can all be washable if I heat set it. Except I'm not really worried about that on the dolls with them being washable because I'm not going to put them in the washing machine. But what will end up being washed potentially is the fabric that I did. This was the cleanup fabric from cleaning off the stencil. That stuff, if I want it to be washable, I just need to heat set it. And so for heat setting that, all you want to do is follow the directions right on the fashion spray. And then once you've done that, these things are completely washable. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. And that way you'll know as soon as I have a new one out. If you'd like to get your hands on the Dancing with Matisse stencil, that can be found over at stencilgoproducts.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.